In this video, I am going to explain how app works. Here is how I am planning to do this lab. First, I am going to use my computer to show how it plays out in real world environment with the help of command prompt and Wireshark. Second, I am going to use packet tracer to show you in the simulation mode. So it's going to be a real interesting video. Before we get into the video, let me introduce you to some terminology used with ARP. ARP stands for Address Resolution Protocol, which is used to resolve IP addresses into MAC addresses. MAC address stands for Media Access Control. There are other names for MAC address. Ethernet address, hardware address, physical address, link layer address. So don't get confused when these terms are used interchangeably. Let's look at how a MAC address looks like. So it is a 48 bits or 6 byte hexadecimal address. MAC address is a globally unique identifier assigned to a network interface controller for use as a network address in communications within a network segment. So you have to note here it is within a network segment not between a network segment. So when I say a network segment you call that as a LAN. So MAC addresses are directly used for communication within a LAN environment. So if a packet has to cross between the LAN or beyond your routers to outside world, this app is going to work a little differently. So I'm going to show you everything in this video in the real time environment. First, what you have to do is just type in app app minus a to look at your app cache. So if you look at here, I have a very long list of IPs and it is under interface 10, 130, 90, 223. That is my VPN uh, interface. That's why I'm seeing all of these addresses here. But if I disconnect from my VPN, up minus A, you see my up table is much smaller. So it is within this network segment. So let's look at here. This is where we are going to focus now. Let me do an IP, IP config. And this is my gateway address. So this is my local router. And I know some IP addresses already in this local network. Most of them are going to be dynamic. Some of them I use frequently become as static. But you also can make some up entry as static by the command. What I'm going to do is I'm going to clear my up table, up cache, up minus d space asterisk. Okay, now my up table is cleared. So now I do minus a. I only have my default gateway that will be there and I have a, a static entry here. So let me open up my Wireshark. So here is my Wireshark. Okay, this is my Wi-Fi. Let me open it up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to ping, ping 192, 168, 1.5. Okay, so what's going to happen is in my in my Wireshark, I'm going to see all these packets because when I go here now, I should see that five. Okay, so let's analyze the R packet here. So I'm going to stop here and you know what my IP address is. My IP, IP config, my IP address is 
1242 search our packets do a search here okay so these are the our packets okay so you know my address is 192-168-1242. So this is the reply. Let's look at where is my app broadcast. Okay, here is my broadcast. Okay, so this is a request, app request. And it is an Ethernet frame. And it has a source MAC address. So it put its source MAC address into that packet. So if you see here, my MAC address is IP config all will give those details. So this Wi-Fi, this is the default gateway. And the physical address is 79D9. Here it is. It is 79D9. And then its sender IP address 192.168.1. 242 and target MAC address because it doesn't know the MAC address first. That's why it's want to find out. And target IP address is 192.168.1.5. And the host that has that IP address is going to respond. None of the other hosts are not going to respond to this packet. And then let's look at that packet. This is the reply. If you look at the reply, the sender that is 192.168.1.5 is sending its MAC address to the target. That is the machine that requested that MAC address. So now that the requester is become as a target that you know is 192.168.1.242. So this is how app works. Let me show you how it works in the packet tracer environment. So I have four PCs here on VLAN 10 and one PC on VLAN 20, one PC on VLAN 30. So when I ping from this PC to this PC, the ARP request is supposed to go to all these three PCs, one, two, and three, to find out what is the destination MAC address and see how it goes. So before we do that, go to edit filters and make sure you are using only the app here. Let me open this PC here. Go here. App minus A. App minus A. No app entry found. Let me ping 1.10. Go to simulation mode. Go to this PC. Enter. The simulation is starting. So you see the packet starting here. Let's play the simulation. Okay. So you see one come coming here and it is not so it is not the destination PC I wanted let's play okay now it's here okay now you see it is going to both of them so it is not the PC and this is the right PC so it's sending the response to this PC via this switch. So it's coming here and it will go here because the response is a unique cache packet. It will not go to the other ones. Now let's go to the real time mode and then go to this PC and C go to the app and I say now it has learned the dynamic app for that PC 10 that we just pinned. So let's find out what will happen if two IP addresses are on different subnets. 
So the device will follow a completely different logic. It will look at its routing table for a route to the destination network and then it will send its packet to the appropriate router or to its default gateway if no more specific route is present. In this scenario, ARP will be used to find the hardware address of the router because the destination IP address has already been deemed to not be directly reachable. So the packet must be delivered to the router which can take care of it. So let's see this in the simulation mode. So what will happen is when I do a ping, we are only going to look at the ARP, not the ping. So this PC is going to send the packet to this router. So it needs to know the router MAC address. So what it's going to do, it's, it's going to do an ARP for the router MAC address. So when ARP request goes here, the router is going to respond back to this PC so that this PC know how to send the packet to this router. And then what router has to do is, now it's going to take over the rest of the communication. It, it need to know the MAC address of this destination host. So what it is going to do is, it is going to send a new ARP request by replacing the MAC address to its MAC address because it's not going to use this MAC address because this is going to handle the packet now. So it's need to replace the MAC address by its router MAC address and send the packet to here. And then the new destination for the response from this PC is going to be this router, not to this PC because the PC's business stops at the router. So let's look at in motion. I'm going to go here. Command ping 192.168.2.20. I'm going to go to simulation mode. Go back here. Ping. Minimize it. So let's see how it's going to play out. Okay, now it's sending the ARP request via the switch to the router. The router is going to send its MAC address back to this PC. You see? Okay. And at the same time, it's going to query these PCs who has that MAC address. Okay. Now, if you see, it is going to send the packet here to both PCs and this PC is going to say I don't have this IP so this is going to respond with this MAC to this router so the app should stop with this router see it stops here so this is how it plays out when you do an app outside of the network. Hope this video is uh, helpful for you. So I made a lot of effort to make this video. So please do subscribe, like and comment on this video. Thanks. Bye.